Uh, hello everyone and welcome to part one of this week's lecture. Uh, in this lecture we are going to talk about pressure uh, and different forms of pressure. We will look at uh, hydrostatic pressure and how to calculate it. Uh, we will talk about Archimedes principle and Pascal laws and finally we will look at different devices that we can use to measure uh, a pressure. So before we go into detail of pressure, uh, let's look at the bigger picture that we discussed in last lecture. So we are discussing fluid mechanics, that is the study of effect of forces uh, on the body of element. And the fluid mechanics can be further divided into fluid statics, that is the study of fluids at rest, and fluid dynamics, that is the study of fluids in motion. And uh, we can further divide fluid statics into hydrostatic and aerostatics. Uh, in hydrostatics, we deal with the incompressible fluids, and in um, aerostatics, we uh, deal with compressible fluids at rest. And fluid dynamics can also be further divided into hydrodynamics and aerodynamics. In hydrodynamics, we look at um, uh, fluids in incompressible fluids in motion. And uh, in aerodynamics, we look at compressible fluids uh, in motion. So for today's lecture, we will mainly talk about hydrostatics that deals with the fluid at rest. So when we say that the fluid is at rest, uh, what, we, what it means that a fluid at rest has no shear stress. It means that um, uh, there, are, uh, there are no motion in the fluid because if there are stresses, shear stress is present, it will lead to motion of the fluid. But a fluid at rest can have normal forces or normal stresses. That's what we call pressure. And these normal forces are very important in several applications. For example, in, uh, in overturning of concrete dams. For example, here you can see this. there is a dam and then uh, this stored water is exerting uh, different level of forces on this dam. So how we can uh, uh, evaluate the magnitude and location of these forces is what we deal with fluid statics. Uh, other more engineering uh, applications are, for example, when we are talking about designing pressure vessels or boilers, these are the forces uh, that are very important there as well. A more common example, for example, you might have seen uh, uh, a canal gate uh, and in time they break because of the, of the normal forces that the water exert on these, um, these gates. So these forces are very uh, important, as I said, and in fluid statistics, that we look at uh, how we can compute the magnitude and location of these forces. Uh, we also use these concepts in, in development of uh, uh, different instruments to measure pressure. And finally, when we look at, for example, pressure transmission systems, uh, for example, car jacks and automobile brakes and, and hoists. Okay. We will talk about some of these in the in the coming uh, lecture. Let's start with defining pressure. So pressure or pressure intensity is the normal stress in a static fluid that is the force per unit area. And this force has to be acting perpendicular to the direction of the area. That is what we call pressure. So it means the force is always perpendicular to the area. So if we say that F is the total normal pressure that is acting on a finite uh, element A, <clears throat> so we can drive the expression for pressure. And as engineers, uh, we always consider a, a small differential area or differential system. Uh, uh, for example, here, if DF is the normal force acting on this differential area, DA, then we can write the expression for pressure that is P is equal to DF over DA. And if we use the continuum assumption, it means that uh, this differential, a differential um, system is representing the whole bulk of the, of the system, bulk of the fluid. We can write the expression P is equal to F over A. So to go from this differential volume to whole bulk of the system, we just have to actually integrate this, this system. Okay. So pressure is the force per unit area. 
and what is really important is that this A is actually the contact area. So, for example, if you place a book uh, on your hand, you will see that it exert some force or you will experience some pressure. But if you now replace this, uh, or if you if you place this book on a pencil, and you are exerting a more, more or less same amount of weight or force on your hand, but you will feel much more pressure because by placing it uh, on top of a pencil, actually you have reduced the contact area significantly, and that is why you will feel much more pressure in situation B compared to situation A. Okay. Uh, so we have SI units of pressure that is um, Newton per meter square. Uh, Newton is a unit of force, meter square is a unit of area. And uh, in SI system, more commonly used system uh, units are, are Pascal, and we call it Pascal. And uh, we can also, uh, we use, as engineers, we use a lot of other units of pressure. Uh, for example, in British gravitational system, PSI, that is pound per square inch, and PSF, that is pound per square feet, and then uh, metric system. So when we are converting from one unit to another, we have to use uh, these conversion factors uh, as we discussed in previous lecture. So uh, a third question for you. So, for example, you have two knives, one is a dull knife and one is a sharp knife, and you exert the same amount of force. So, which of these two knives will exert the higher pressure? So, maybe pause the video for a few seconds and try to answer it. And if your answer is sharp knife, that is correct. And the reason why, because you have, uh, again, reduced the contact area significantly, and that increases the, the the pressure that you are exerting on the knife surface. Here you have much larger area, while in this sharp case you have much smaller area. Uh, then we have atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure is the the pressure that the atmosphere of Earth exerts on any object that is at the surface of Earth. So for example, that is equivalent of one atmospheric pressure. And we can convert this one atmospheric pressure uh, into SI unit that is 100 kilopascal. And we can also convert it into other units of pressure, for example, PSI, uh, bar, and millimeter of mercury. Millimeter of mercury is uh, a unit that we use for very low pressures or vacuum pressures, as we will see in, in a couple of slides. Uh, and as engineers, uh, normally we uh, use devices that actually, instead of measuring the absolute pressure or, or the pressure of the system, it measures the pressure difference between uh, the, the, the pressure, the point of pressure and the atmospheric pressure. So based on this, there are uh, two forms of pressure. Uh, one is called absolute pressure and the second one is called gauge pressure. So absolute pressure is the pressure that you measure uh, with the reference to absolute vacuum. And absolute vacuum is a, is a situation, for example, you have this, this uh, container and if you take out all the molecules from inside this system, you will have absolute vacuum. And if you measure a pressure uh, relative to this uh, system, you will have the absolute pressure. So one atm pressure, that is what we feel uh, on our bodies when we walk on the surface of the earth, is an absolute pressure. Now gauge pressure is the pressure that you measure relative to the uh, atmospheric pressure. So for example, one atm absolute pressure will be equal to zero gauge pressure. Okay, because it is relative to the absolute pressure. And if we uh, try to see what is absolute pressure, uh, the absolute vacuum on gauge pressure, so that will be equivalent to minus one because you have to uh, come down one step that is minus one um, in, in gauge. And if you measure a pressure that is uh, above atmospheric pressure, 
um, it means that a pressure of let's say 2 atm or 3 atm so you will have a positive gauge pressure okay and if you measure uh, a pressure that is below 1 atm it means that you are in a partial vacuum so you will see on a gauge uh, it as negative gauge pressure okay so the reason that the gauge pressure is minus 1 is because when you are making any gauge uh, the the atmosphere is exerting pressure on on that gauge so you you can only measure the pressure that is the relative to that atmospheric pressure okay so absolute pressure is equal to gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure okay so if a gauge shows you a value of 1 atm 1 atm so it means the absolute pressure at that point is actually 2 atm because you have to add uh, uh, absolute pressure of the of the atmosphere as well into that pressure uh, and that is what i uh, explained on the previous slide it's just in the form of text so that you can really understand and uh, not to confuse uh, between different terms of pressure okay so atmospheric pressure is also called barometric pressure and that is the pressure that the atmosphere uh, around us exert and that is what uh, we measure using barometer that's why it is called barometric pressure and atmospheric pressure vary with the elevation so as you go away from the surface of earth towards space for example the pressure is much lower and also it changes with the meteorological conditions as you see in different weather apps you will see that uh, today the pressure is a bit lower high so that change with how the the wind travel between different regions of the world so an important thing to note that when we uh, deal with gases we preferably use absolute pressure because um, for example as you will see in the subject of thermodynamics uh, because most of the equations developed for gases uh, require absolute pressure while when we are dealing with liquids and in most of the engineering applications we normally measure pressure in the form of gauge pressure okay so just a, a concept question for you to uh, check your knowledge if you understand the concept of absolute pressure and gauge pressure correctly so imagine that you are spray painting with a can uh, and the local atmospheric pressure around you is 99 kilopascal and the can runs out and you cannot spray anymore. So what you think is the absolute pressure inside that can. So please pause the video and try to answer this, that what, would, what is the absolute pressure inside the can when it is empty. Okay, so if your answer is 99.8 kilopascal, that is correct because the can, uh, when it was being filled, uh, it was filled on atmospheric pressure because the uh, the system, the, the atmosphere was exerting the same pressure on the liquid when it was being made. So that's why the inside pressure is atmospheric pressure. And now try to answer that what is the gauge pressure now? on the can when it is empty so again pause the video and try to answer it and if your answer is zero kilopascal if it means that zero gauge pressure it means that uh, now there is no propellant in the system and the only pressure that you feel is the atmospheric pressure and that is why you cannot spray paint anymore because the pressure inside the can and outside the can are equal Okay, uh, so that's the end of this part of lecture. In the next lecture, we will look at uh, hydrostatic pressure and how we uh, calculate hydrostatic pressure. Okay, thank you.